Oh, hello, hello, everybody, and welcome to another Chorus at 2021 draft here on the channel. Before I dive in, I do want to remind you that if you enjoy the video, be sure to hit that thumbs up button, subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any future videos, and leave a comment in the comment section down below with any questions or feedback. You can catch me streaming live at twitch.tv slash Nikolai Bolas. Without further ado, let's dive on in. This is going to be best of three. Got to experiment with the meta, of course. See how everything goes. But we are going to be trying out best of three today. Okie doke, and we have opened a strong rare, though I don't think it is necessarily better than every common and uncommon. Pack leader gives all the dogs plus and plus one. Hey! Boom. Hey, Carney, thank you so much for your subscribing. Welcome to the formation. Show him some love in chat. And, uh,. Yeah, thanks for sharing that Twitch Prime. But yeah, Pack Leader, pretty solid rare. Uh, there are a couple dogs that it does work well with, and it is a good two drop because it can't really be dealt damage itself. So uh, it's it, uh, just a great attacker. So I like this one. There's also Soul Seer, which is a great uncommon. There is Basri's Acolyte, which is a fantastic common, one of the best commons in the set. Perfect for those curve out draws. And then I think I go Pack Leader or Soul Seer is like the best card in the pack. Basri's Acolyte might be better than Pack Leader, but I do want to try out the Pack Leader. Uh, it's fun to try, maybe get some dog synergies going. And there is an Alpine Watchdog in this pack, but I think that that might wheel. I'm optimistic. We do already have pack leader, so other we will be playing Alpine Watchdog just on its own. But I do think it will wheel. So I think here we might try Falconer Adept. I've been meaning to try this card out, and this is the perfect opportunity. I don't love Angelica in Ascension. Um, but I do want to try out Falconer Adept. I haven't gotten to yet, and I think that it could be a really nice, uh, good card. Especially if I'm just trying to be a nice aggressive deck. Um, Alpine Watchdog hopefully wheels, though that's no by no means guaranteed. There is a Hunter's Edge, which is a good uh, common, so that could be a good card with Pack Leader. I could see taking that and going for White Green, because putting a bunch of counters onto Pack Leader is nice. Um, so maybe I'm supposed to take this, and then... Not going to but I would like to play the pack leader. So taking a Falcon Adept could be good. I, I don't think it's as good of a card, but I do want to experiment, try new things. I haven't tried the Falcon Adept deck at the moment. Okay, so now there is a Cultivate, which could let us splash. Yeah, but I'm not just going to have a random 1 1 lying around for sure. It's hard to say. It's good with Falcon Adept. Get that 4 4 uh, creature. Um, there's a Burrow Fist Oak if I wanted to keep going for this white green plan. This is a good card in a beatdown deck. Uh, what else is there? There's pa Village Rites, which can be good with Falconer Adept. Uh, there is Gloom Sword. I think white black is the type of color you want to get into based on uncommons. Um, I do like Burrow Fist Oak, so I think we'll take that. White doesn't really, white green doesn't really love cultivate decks. I am Keplana. Welcome because you're not really looking to splash crazy things. There is a Dreadmaw, though. I could play more of a mid-range deck. Maybe I do want to take the Cultivate and just experiment with that as well. But I like the Burl Fist Oak a lot. Let's try the Cultivate. I, I really want to try that out. We'll just have a more mid-rangey deck. And now there is a Meteorite. I could facilitate splashes as well. With a Cultivate and a Meteorite, the world is our oyster. So let's take this and see where it leads us. And now there's a Sky Scanner, which is a fine card. Igneous Cur is a dog to go with Pack Leader, which is kind of why I wanted to buy a an Aggressive deck, but we're just going to see how things go. Containment Priest is okay. Daybreak Charger is a good two drop. Works well with Falconer Adept. I think Daybreak Charger is just better than Containment Priest, which is really funny. Except against the reanimator deck, which maybe that means it's good enough. Sky scanner is just great. I think we'll take the sky scanner. Leaves us very flexible still. We could be any number of decks at the moment. We could still just not be white as well. Human Priest is pretty good, but I just like getting a sky scanner. Just delivers as a card. How goes it? Oh, you look good. I like that shirt, and those shoes are really nice. Nice. Oh, that's great. That's fantastic. Looking good, Dad. Okay. Okie doke. 
Perfect. I'll, s I'll see you later, Dad. We're going to experiment with this card, I think. Uh, I haven't gotten to play it yet, but it does seem like a good uh, synergy card. And uh, I think Pride Malkin might wheel. And eh, that probably won't happen because it's late in the pack. But there are three good green cards, so green-white could be good. We aren't Selesnya at the moment. We're just we're just white deck. Alchemist Gift is okay. It's especially good with Pack Leader, giving that Death Touch. So I like that. There's also Porkless Vine. But I think we'll just speculate into a different color. I don't like the Archfiend's Vessel. Let's take the Gift. See what seems open. Swift Response is great. Looks like white is fairly open. We have a couple tools for like splashing stuff where like a white deck base, white green maybe. Rise again came back. Interesting, interesting. Daybreak chargers in the pack still. We'll just take that. Keep the white aggressive stuff flowing. There is some green, but I like this better than snare spinner. I also like Titanic Growth. Read the Tides is one I haven't tried out yet. Rise Again is interesting. But we don't have any good things to reanimate. I just like the Charger. Charger also works well with the Adept. Satessin Training is nice. There's also a Cage Zombie, but again, I don't really want to be white-black for no good reason. And Satessin Training works well with the Pack Leader and things like that. Portcullis Vine. Cage Zombie. Let's take the vine. We're not going to splash the cage zombie. And now there's a forgotten sentinel we're not going to play. So we're a white green deck that can splash any color. At the moment. What with a cultivate and a meteorite. Or we could just abandon the idea of just being pure aggro of being a splashing deck and just play more aggressively we have a lot of options i like speculating on the more controlling cards though because it just gives us flexibility sure a burl fist oak would be nice works well with the satessin training but we don't need to commit to that igneous cur just in case red starts looking open because we could just abandon these to play a red deck and uh it's interesting that the dog didn't wheel i wonder why the two two dog did not wheel thank you so much angel monarch Okay, what do we open here? Oh, good oak. So we opened Ward Watcher of Spheres, which is a really good card. Really good payoff for a Flyers deck. Blue didn't look particularly open. Pack one, we didn't see any of the top blue commons, I don't think. There wasn't any roaming ghost lights. What other good commons in blue do I like? Uh, we didn't see any Mistral Singers, no Rom uh, Rousing Reeds. There's also a Ghostly Pilferer, which is a solid card for sure. I don't, I'm a little bit lower on Gale Swooper than I was. Um, hmm. Okay, cool. See you, later. See you later. Maybe we try the Ghostly Pilfer. We're not going to be going for a full-on Flyer deck. Actually, let's just take the Palladium Mirror. It'll lead to some nice big mana stuff that we can do. And uh, we can be like a nice little mid-range deck here. And it fits into any deck we end up playing. Ooh, Conclave Mentor. Nice, nice. We don't have any counter stuff yet, but we can definitely get there on that. And White Green was looking the most open pack one. There's also a Sanctum of Stone Fangs. And we do have the tools to kind of play a Shrine deck, but we don't have any other Shrines right now. So let's just take the Conclave Mentor. Tempered Veteran and Conclave Mentor is a great combination. Mentor is super good, yeah. And now Hunter's Edge. Nice little synergy piece. Pride Mulkin's also nice. But we're just going to take the Hunter's Edge to get that removal spell. There's also Liliana's Devotee, which is a fantastic card. But we don't really want to jump into black. And White Green has looked pretty open. We're still definitely open to splashing with, with our Cultivate and our Meteorite. There is a Drowsing Tyranodon. I'm a little bit lower on the Tyranodon than I was. Um, and I'm a little bit higher on Short Sword. Short Sword just really works nicely with a lot of the creatures in the format because it just helps your creatures trade up and things like that. Chorister's solid. 
Tyranodon does have to be enabled, and we I think it's best in a red-green deck, which we do not really enable it very well. Truffle Snout's nice as a counter synergy card. Works with the Tempered Veteran, works with the Conclave Mentor. Short Sword might wheel, which would be nice. There's also Chorister, but I think we're just going to take the Truffle Snout and then hope short, short Sword wheels. I would actually actively want one copy of Short Sword in this deck. And now another Sky Scanner versus Truffle Snout. There's a Leafkin Avenger, which is a fine card to splash, maybe. Rousing Reed's also good. I like just getting Sky Scanner, though. Just a nice two for one card. And now it's Pride Malkin versus Colossal Dreadmaw. I like Pride Malkin. More counter synergy. I played the Core Store in one deck, and it, I, then I cut it because it wasn't really at home in that deck, but I, I don't think it's bad. Pride Malkin's a pretty nice pickup. The black white deck doesn't come very together very often, I don't think, just because it's hard to get the uh, payoffs for it. Well, the Sanctum is coming around here. There's also a Sabertooth Mauler, which is quite nice. Oh, let's just take the Sabertooth Mauler. Sanctum could be solid. We do have the tools to play a Sanctum deck. But Sabertooth Mauler has looked really impressive to me. Just naturally gets counters pretty easily. That was a pretty prime opportunity to get a uh, a sanctum, though, a shrine. We're just getting a couple nice payoffs, though. Makeshift Battalion or Valorous Steed. Steed is solid. We're not even necessarily a ramp deck. We're probably going to end up cutting the Cultivate and Meteorite. Or considering it, at least. Porculus Vine is a nice combo with Sabertooth Mauler, but we already have one. Let's just take the Valorous Steed. And now Ranger's Guile. So we have a lot of good cards here. We're really liking our, our deck right now. And Pride Mall King came back. That's great. I do like Satess in Training. And it does cantrip, so maybe I'm supposed to take that. With Conclave Mentor and Tempered Veteran, though, I really do like having everything that can put a counter on things. Yeah, let's just take it. And we did get the Short Sword back. That's perfect. I think Short Sword's actually good. In the set, sure strike, sure. Guile is a nice sideboard card. We're probably not playing the one in the main deck, though. Well, rewarded. We opened up one of the best rares in the set. Definitely a house of a card. 5 mana, 6-6. Six, six. When it attacks, you just get advantage. Probably just going to make 3-3s three most of the time. But drawing cards is nice. If this weren't in the pack, I think I would take the Wildwood Scourge. I think it's just good in my deck. There's also a Visionary. Maybe Visionary is just better than Wildwood Scourge. Yeah, easily just taking the Elder here. And then probably the Visionary, then the Wildwood Scourge, and then Sky Scanner, and then Blossoming Sands. Hey, Cat Tribal. So 3 mana, 2, 3, whenever one more cat. I don't think I have any cats right now. Oh, I do. I have two cats. No, I have four cats. This is actually good in my deck. Let's go. Six or greater. I don't have any of those right now. But Felidar, Feline Sovereign actually does work. I have four cats. Two. Three, four. And I'm actually planning on playing all of them. So, pretty nice addition to the deck. A Lord for four of your creatures is a good card. Uh, Sedescent Training is a solid one. Colossal Dreadmaw would be good in this deck, I think. Fierce Empath isn't really at home here. Yeah, I like the Feline Sovereign. And now it's between... And eh, we're just going to take the removal spell. I was going to say it's between the cat and the removal spell, but, but we have two of the cat already, and we just want more removal. Griffin Area is okay. We don't really have a ton of life gain, though. Just going to take the Hunter's Edge. Dealt damage, you gain one life and create a 1-1. One, one. Let's just take Warden of the Woods. It's a nice big top end creature. I think it's better than the Spore Web Weaver. This is a really nice card against Blue Decks. 
But I think this card is just great in most matchups. So we have 26 cards in the deck right now. We're going to cut Meteorite. Going to maybe cut the Falconer Adept. Maybe cut the Palladium Mirror. The Palladium Mirror is just such a house. Lets you double spell pretty nicely. I could see cutting Cultivate, though that's also a really nice card. Just a nice two for one. We'll see where we end up. Okay, so there is a Tyranodon. There's also just a Truffle Snout. Let's see how much stuff we have that cares about counters. We already have a lot of three drops. I think we're just going to take a track down in this pack. We don't really need the Tyranodon. I guess Tyranodon plus Pride Monk is a nice combo. I like track down just to help me find my Gargaroth more often. So I think I, I really want this track down. More Sanctum shenanigans. Let's take the Bazzer's Acolyte though. That's fantastic. Fortunately, we are passing on a dog to go with our pack leader, but... I'm surprised that the, the first dog didn't wheel. We just didn't get a dog in this draft, which is okay. Bazzer's Acolyte is a house in this, in this type of deck. Another cat. I don't think we want two copies of Trackdown, so let's just take the Canopy Stalker. I think two copies of Trackdown is a bit excessive. Colossal Dreadmaw is a nice addition. Could definitely be a card we want. Wildwood Scourge is great. I do like Blossoming Sands, but Wildwood Scourge is just going to be great in this deck. We have a lot of counters running around. Sedescent Training, nice addition. We already have a couple top end cards, so let's just keep taking the trainings. <sighs> Ta -da. Hmm. Ooh, the Mauler came back. Nice. We actually have a lot of cats. Dilophosaur, sure. Truffle Snout came back. I think we can cut the Daybreak Charger. We're definitely more of a mid-range deck than an aggro deck. Which also means Short Sword gets a lot worse because we don't care about eating down as much. Vine is solid because it does help us enable these Sabertooth Maulers on our own terms, which I like. Okay. So we're just going to try to play a very mid-rangey deck. I don't think we really want Valorous Steed. We don't have any synergies with going wide. I guess we have the Bazzi deck. We're going to cut Canopy Stalker. Dilophosaur, not my favorite. We already have a lot of four drops. We are going to want to try to curve out, but Bazzi's Acolyte can also come down later and be pretty solid. Two, four, five, six, seven... Seven, three drops. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, three drops. So we definitely want to cut some three drops. We can probably consider cutting Cultivate. We'll probably want to cut these Satessin Trainings, maybe. We have two Pride Wonkins to give Trample, and Satessin Training is a pretty low impact card. We have one, two, three, two drops, which is fine. Portcliffe's Vine is one that I would like to get in. I like having two top end guys here. Huh. We have a nice little mana sink with the veteran. Hmm. I like having access to the track down. Hmm. We can probably cut the truffle snouts. Or at least cut one of them. We have four, three, four, two, three, four, four drops, and then two removal spells. Ah, Mir uh, is just really good. It helps us double spell, and then it's a two-two. Then we'll just cut both truffle snouts. 
We're just a mid-range deck, so we're just going to take all the little two-for-ones we can get, like Cultivate, Sky Scanners, things like that. And then I think this card has enough synergy with our Maulers that it's worth playing, because we have three Maulers that we're actively happy to play. And then you can randomly get some free wins from Palladium Mirror into, like, a Colossal Dreadmaw on turn four. Okay, so I like this build right now. We also have these as great tools against aggro, because this is best of three. Okay, well this is going to be good, I think. Really a sweet deck. And I'm really excited to try it out. That's going to do it for the build, and I'll see you folks. Eh, do we want to play 17 lands? Probably. We have a couple 6 drops, an X spell, 5... 6-4 drops. Yeah, we want to play 17 lands. Yeah, that's going to do it for the build, and I'll see you folks in the matches. Before I get to the matches, I want to give a huge shout-out to all of my patrons over at patreon.com slash and a warm welcome to all of my new patrons, Casper P, Chris A, Chirimbola, and Scott S, and also big shout-out to all the patrons who support me at the credits level, and new addition to that list, Scott S. I really do appreciate all of your support. Thank you for helping me continue to produce high-quality videos on a consistent basis. If you are looking to give back to the channel, the Patreon is the best way to do so, and for even a dollar a month, you get access to some pretty cool rewards as my way of saying thank you. It really does help me out a ton and so i do have uh, a lot of gratitude for all the people that support me thanks so much for watching this little intro and without further ado let's get to the matches welcome to round one we are on the play against semulin who is another content creator so this is pretty cool i like this hand we have our, our cards for a mid-range strategy cultivate is of course fantastic let's get our portcullis vine out there it does have nice synergy with our Sabertooth mauler Getting an extra counter to help that one grow. Sure, opt. And then if they turn out not to be aggressive, we can cut this. But this is nice a nice hedge against the aggressive strategies in the format. Because it can block a 2-2 for a while. Gonna get two forests. Next turn, Sabertooth Mauler. Ooh, they're playing a mill deck. Okay. Definitely going to want to cut the Portcullis Vine for something more aggressive. Luckily, we do have an answer to this in our main deck. In the form of some cat removal. Yeah, the mill is pretty annoying. Luckily, they've milled some blanks here. This cat will give them everything trample, which is nice. So this is no longer an effective chump blocker. Put a counter on itself. Ah, my cat likes all the cats that are in play. So now, as soon as I kill one of their creatures, this will untap, so that's really good. In the grand scheme of things for me. So if they ever tap this, then I'm definitely going for it. Nice. They keep hitting lands, which is nice. So 
Swift response is definitely going to get sideboarded out against the mill. Hunter's Edge would have been really good. I could still definitely win this. Okay, those two were really bad for them to mill. <laughs> Yikes. But now their capture sphere is useless. let this thing die. It looks like we're dead here. They're just going to play like Reign of Revelation on end step and I die. No, my pride mall kin. Yikes. Well, that's game. Okie doke. So it looks like they're just a straight up mill deck control. So what do we want? We do not want our swift response because it doesn't kill anything in their deck. Portcliffe's vine is also not necessary because it's just kind of a clunker. We don't really want Sky Scanner as much. Cultivate's not necessary either. So we've got five cards that are mostly good in more controlling situations. We're going to add Satessin Trainings just so our big creatures always have Trample to get over those, those Sky Scanners and the like. We're going to add... Do we have any enchantment removal? No, we do not. They are blue-black, so we could add in some cards to give us hexproof. Falcon Adept seemed okay. Valorous Steed seems okay. And then maybe one copy of Ranger's Guile for those extra controlling decks. Ooh, Canopy Stalker is interesting. It doesn't really attack all that well, but yeah, it could have been a good option. We'll see how it look, would look in this situation. Okay, this is a good hand. Pack leader is a nice attacker. Arcanist, definitely a problem. Oh my gosh, he's got it again. Yay, he milled two lands, get wrecked. This could snowball out of control. Oh, 
Okay. Bastard's Acolyte would have been a great draw. Does he really have the two mana counter spell? Nope, luckily he does not. Probably could have cut the track down. Does he have grasp? Bummer. I mean, you need to draw a spell this turn. Perfect. That was going to be a good card for me. Oh, I should have played my land first to play around the counter spell. Okay, yeah. I wonder how many copies of Teferi's Tutelage he has, because with only one, it would be really a uh, bummer if he just happened to have it on turn three both games. I'm not sure he had it on turn three in the first game, but... That's just unlucky. Can't get my Gargaroth in. Dang it. Yep, that's going to do it. Uh, unfortunate, but sometimes you can't win the matchups, and uh, they have their Teferi Tutelage in play. Oh well. Welcome to round two. This hand is pretty good. It happens. You can't win them all. We also didn't really curve out perfectly in either game. Like, we were a bit land heavy in uh, our games. Let's just use the Pride Malkin here. We can start growing it. Okay, perfect. Now we can use the Sky Scanner to kill something like a Brian Wingmare. Okay. I messed that up. I should have done that post combat. Not going to attack. Sure. Hopefully they don't have a... I don't think there is a combat trick they could have, actually. Now we have a nice big sky scanner and the Ma Mauler gets bigger. Oh, 
Okay. Just gonna come down to this flip here. And they win the flip, so I lose three life and they get a 2-2. Two -two. That happens for sure. Ooh, that's a good one. That's really good because now I get a another counter on this thing and it will untap. And this even has reach. Let's see if they win the flip this time. They lost it. Nice. Got the win. Pretty nice. So we're going to stay white black life gain deck. So grindiness is going to be good here. I like our configuration against them. I think. There's no like particular card that I think was bad. <sighs> I guess Portcullis Vine might not be the best card in the matchup. We're going to lead with Cultivate, because then we can double spell on the next turn. My guy doesn't take damage. They definitely didn't understand how that interaction worked. Okay, maybe they did. Hey, hey, Solemn Simulacrum, nice. This is a pretty nice attacker now. And if they kill this with a Legion's Judgment, then our Warden of the Woods does good work. Okay, grasp, kind of irritating. I like killing the indulging patrician right away. They trade both of those, that's fine. Let's just attack with the Pride Monken though. These we're gonna trade eventually, and I like just getting rid of it now. I guess I could have waited until I had my other cat. And this gets two counters every turn now. So if we draw a land, that's okay. Um we're just going to get this guy into play now. I would love to do this, but all my stuff requires 7 mana at the moment. Wow. That's huge. They killed that instead of this. I don't understand. You have to kill this. They're about to be in a world of hurt here. So we're going to go... We're going to wait to keep this protected from a grasp.
Because like if they had grass before our end step, we wouldn't get two counters here. Okay, so they do have grasp. Nope, they do not have grasp. I misread that situation, I guess. I think I am relatively prone to flood in this deck, so maybe I do need to cut a land. This is my like mana sink, and it's not even a huge mana sink. Okay. Okay, so they're out of resources. That was an amazing draw. I'm just going to keep putting counters on this until it's over 8 toughness. Okay, that plan seems a little silly now. I'm actually just going to grow the Sky Scanner and keep it a very scary threat. Got the win! Gonna make a couple tweaks to the deck and I'll see you in the finals. I realize that the deck doesn't really use mana that well, so I cut the Cultivate and Palladium Mirror for a Satessin Training and a uh, Valorous Steed. So just a couple creatures. I do 40, the Great Flying Dragon. Just trying to survive here. This block is pretty okay. Yeah, I'm dead. This is a game where if I was on the play, it would have been very different. But I kept a hand that didn't do anything until turn three, and I got really punished. Okay, so Pork Lizvine didn't look like it traded all that well for their stuff. Um, what did? Truffle Snout looked great, because it gains me four life. And I don't even need to put a counter on it. I think I like the sound of that. Oh. Okay, we're on the play this time. This hand is much better. Probably gonna play this as a 1-1 one, one, and then it'll just consistently grow over the course of the game. I don't really have any other place to play it on the curve. Okay. Since I'm not going to be getting these guys out, and I don't know when I will, I'm just going to trade this guy off. I'm okay with that.
Yikes. We're gonna save the swift response. I might not get a chance to use it, but I really want to use my mana efficiently. Oh, thanks for the redemption, Great Flying Dragon. I'll do those in a minute. My cat just like having the time of her life. Okay, this works out perfectly. Nope, she did not. They did not decide to attack. Okay. They can put a counter on it, but it won't matter. Now, both of my threats are lethal. Bazri's Acolyte, sure. I got two nice threats here still. And we got the win. Okay, so we're going to want to bring in our Daybreak Charger on the draw. Just have an extra blocker for their Daybreak Charger because we know they have a few of those. This card could be okay. Just gains us some life. And then what do we want to cut? Maybe track down, because we don't have time for that. And maybe... I don't want it, actually. Maybe I don't want the Canopy Stalker. Yeah, this is to decide whether we go 2-1 or not. Let's cut Valorous Steed for the Canopy Stalker, because we just want that extra life gain at the cheaper part of the curve. Okay, we're going to keep this hand. It's really good. It doesn't beat his in, uh, the most insane draws, but this into this is really nice. Oh, thank goodness. So they can't have a Hunter's Edge for a turn. So we'll Hunter's Edge whatever they play on their turn three. Okay, so we'll Hunter's Edge this. And that'll prevent them from doing anything too crazy, and then we just go from there. That was pretty pretty brutal. I doubt they'll be able to come back once I pride Malkin. I think they were just dead because this would put a combined four counters and then this would give a plus two plus oh, so this would have been six um, plus six, six plus seven, seven is 13. They were at 11 and then this gives plus two. So this would have been 15 damage and they would have been had a three toughness creature. So they would have been dead. So we got the win. We battled back from starting off 0-1 against Mill. Had a really good match, had a really close match in the finals and a really good match in the second match. And... Uh, overall had a blast this was our deck it was a pretty good green white mid-range counters deck i think cutting the cultivate and the Pal palladium mirror was actually really important really gave our deck some extra uh tools to compete even though we didn't really draw the valorous deed but some pretty good sideboard tools and some pretty good matches we didn't even need the elder Gar gargaroth to win our game so 
Really cool stuff you can do with green white counters. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you did make it all the way to the end of the video and you're watching on YouTube, remember to hit that thumbs up button, subscribe to the channel, and leave a comment in the comment section down below. Leave hashtag counter victory to let me know you made it all the way to the end of the video. It was a ton of fun getting those Conclave Mentors. Early, uh, early is going to be a key for success in your own drafts. I think this card really is a house in the right deck. That's going to do it for this draft. Though. Remember to check out the Discord server, the free community Nick Discord server for Nikolai Bolas and the channel. Uh, it's a great place to talk about decks, talk about picks, talk about cards, and it's free so be sure to join that in the description there's a link and also in the pinned comment and also you can support me directly via the patreon patreon.com slash nikolai bolas if you'd like to catch the stream live you can find me at twitch.tv slash nikolai bolas that's gonna do it for this video i hope you enjoyed it and i'll talk to you next time